Hello everyone. It appears I'm a couple minutes late. I was like downstairs at like 11.45 I decided I was starving. So I was gonna make lunch and then I remembered, no, I have to be online at noon. So I was watching the time on the stove, by which I am not late. <laughs> But on my phone when I went to log in, I'm like, oh my goodness, it says it's two minutes after. So anyways, whether you're here on my time and a couple minutes after, or you were here waiting for me, thank you for joining me. <coughs> I just ate some spicy cauliflower, so now I've got a little bit of a cough. The spice is kicking in, so if I hack, that's what's going on a little bit here. But um, thank you for joining me. Welcome. You have found Sarah Lynn Stamps, or Sarah Lynn Duque with Sarah Lynn Stamps. And you have found me here for our regular Cards and Coffee, which is every Wednesday at noon, right here on Sarah Lynn Stamps Facebook Live. <coughs> Anyways, today I had this really lovely fall Pretty Pumpkins card ready to share with you because, well, it's October and that's what you do. You do fall cards. Um, and it really was gorgeous, but I don't know why. I woke up this morning and I just had this urge to pull out this oldie but goodie. Lovely used stamp set. When I say oldie, it's really not super old, but it is one of the first stamp sets that I bought just over a year ago when I signed up. I think this might have actually been part of my starter kit. I'm not 100% sure about that. But I haven't used it really since, I don't know when, for quite some time. And I just really wanted to pull it out today and use it. So we are going back to lovely you. And I really love this stamp set because it is really easy to make gorgeous cards. Um, it has so many different little images here that you can interconnect together for really basic, simple stamping. And then it has so many different sentiments for every single occasion that you could think of. So it's really a one-stop shop, this stamp set. It's amazing. It's also a great stamp set for those of you that um, don't have a die cutting machine because there's no die cutting or there's no dies that coordinate this with this. There's no dies that are required to really get good use out of this stamp set. So, <coughs> excuse me. Again, you can fussy cut out some of these images, but the one thing that there is with this stamp set is a punch that coordinates with it. And when we say coordinates, we mean that it functions really well with the stamp set. So this punch here, this is the lovely you I think lovely take a pick punch, I think it's called lovely pick a punch, something like that. <laughs> lovely pick a punch, I think it's called. Um, and it coordinates with the stamp set because all of these different images will fit onto these labels. So these are meant to cut out your labels uh, with your sentiments on them. And there's two different ends here. One has more of a like an outer scalloped edge and this one has more of a square kind of beveled edge I guess you would call and um, and you can punch each of these different ends in three different sizes so I want to say let me get out a little measuring thing here so that I um, do this correctly because I want to make sure I tell you the truth yeah so a half inch a three-quarter inch and a one inch okay so that's what we got here we have a half inch a three-quarter inch and a one inch so you can do that in both of these so there's really six different punches here and, and it shows you the line so each punch will have a slightly different or a width I guess will have a slightly different end on it so it's really quite pretty but anyways I have not used these enough and I wanted to do so today so actually let me get me this scrap piece of paper back in and we are going to though kind of stick with some fall-ish colors and when I say fall colors I usually think of fall with some of the more dark saturated um, colors the oranges and purples and those types of colors so that's what we're going to do today. All right, I have a piece here. Uh, this is my card base. So this measures eight and a half by five and a half. And it is just folded or scored at half at four and a quarter. And we are going to fold that to make our card base. So this is crushed curry. Now I find crushed curry to be quite similar to bumblebee. So for example, here's the crushed curry and here's the bumblebee. So you can see there is a difference. The crushed curry is a little bit more yellow than the bumblebee, but they're fairly similar. So if you don't have crushed curry, bumblebee is a great alternative uh, for this card or for any fall card or card that is using or recommends, I guess, 
a crushed curry piece in it and vice versa for bumblebee, right? I also have a piece of white and this measures four by five and a quarter. So we are gonna layer that on top here. And again, this is a really simple card, but very pretty, very simple, very pretty. Basic stamping we're doing today here. And then I have a couple of extra pieces, just a scrap of the crushed curry. Um, I didn't even measure this. So I would say that it is about a half an inch and it's just as long as the pieces I had. And I'm gonna cut it down to whatever I need. And this one here was a one, let me verify that. I believe this is a one inch. This is a one inch, a one inch piece. And again, I just left it the full length so that I can decide how long I want it. The one thing I do find out about, I do find with this punch is that it actually cuts off more than you think it would. It cuts off about a quarter of an inch when you punch it. And so as a result, if you're punching both sides, you're losing about half an inch off of your piece. So you wanna make sure that you account for that. And so I usually like to leave it nice and long so that gives me a little bit of a wiggle room. But let's start with some stamping here. I'm gonna set my extra pieces aside for a moment. So out of the Lovely You stamp set, I have taken out most of the images here at the bottom, <clears throat> with the exception of I don't have this long leaf out and I don't have this little fleur de leaf or whatever it's called up here. We are gonna do some very basic stamping. The colors I'm going to use today is balmy blue. I always think it's nice to break up some of our heavier um, fall colors with something that's light and fresh. It just kind of to me, balances it out really nice. So balmy blue is our color to do that today. I have rich razzleberry, crushed curry, and old olive. So I have heard that crushed curry may not be everyone's favorite color. And so the thing that I recommend people do is if there's a color that you don't love, coordinate it with other colors that you do love, and you might find a new way of using it um, and just learn a new or see a new appreciation for that color. So crushed curry is the one we're going with today. I'm gonna to start with the old olive and I just wanna put up my little demo here so I can see what I'm doing. And we are gonna stamp some leaves with the old olive. So actually let me move those out of the way. So I'm gonna start here with this larger leaf that looks like this. I'm just gonna go tap, tap, tap on here. And what we're going to do is we're kind of trying to create a little bit of a circle here on our page and a little bit to the right. Our label is gonna go across here on top of what we stamp. So I'm gonna just randomly stamp, and honestly, this is random. You do not have to sort of have a huge plan when you start this. We just kind of wanna balance out the colors around our, our sentiment. <clears throat> now I'm gonna use actually the same one here. You could. Um, actually, no, I'm not. You could use that other leaf if you want to do that, but I'm actually gonna use this one with the three leaves on here. And I want to just try to have a little bit of a different color. You could use a different color of green, but I'm going to just stamp on my ink pad and stamp off all my work surface, and then go ahead and add that here. Now you can see we have two depths of the same color, but they just add a little bit. They look different because we've stamped one off first. All right, and again, we're just randomly stamping here, although I want all my stems pointing towards the middle. So that's the only thing that I'm trying to accomplish, and I didn't stamp that one off, because I forgot, but that's okay, it's okay. We're trying to mix up different depths and different colors here. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for now. I might come back and do some more of the green. <coughs> <coughs> so now I have the rich raspberry, and so, um. The thing that you could do with this is that, so I am just stamping my images solely in one color. Now obviously we have a flower and a leaf and if you wanted to use your Stampin' and Write markers, you could color the rubber with Rich Razzleberry and the base of your stem with Old Olive or a different green um, and then have a multicolored image. But for this, we're doing some basic stamping and I actually think this looks really pretty, just stamped all together. So we are going to do um, a rich razzleberry flower. And again, you wanna just be gentle when you stamp. I find this one especially very easy to get sort of that halo around it. You can see how the ink gets on the edges and you could trim that down with some rubber scissors, but really what you wanna do is just make sure that when you're stamping, that you are not pushing too hard. You just put down your image and pick it back up. Now I left a little spot there, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna just keep going. All right, there, that one was much better. 
Okay, and I might add a little bit more of that after, but we're going to just set that aside as well. Okay, I'm going to take the crushed curry. And this one, I think this crushed curry actually really makes this card. Just such a really vibrant yellow um, that looks beautiful. And I'm going to use this little tiny flower here with the little buds on the end for the crushed curry. And again, we're just trying to make a little bit of a border here around the edge. Um, to frame our sentiment. I guess I'll put that one right there. So let me give you an idea of what I mean by that. So when I trim this down, I'm going to actually put this over top of here. So you see how all of the flowers are peeking out around that? That's what we're trying to do. All right, now I have one more to put on, and that is our bash or balmy blue. Bashful blue, come on. <laughs> That's an old color. All right, this one's a little sticky. It means I haven't used it enough. Okay, balmy blue, and I'm gonna just kind of take this and fill in some holes with it. And it's great if they overlap. That's kind of what we want. We need another one over here. And I probably want some blue down here somewhere. Let's stick that there. Now we can kind of eyeball it and put this over top and see if there's anything missing. What do you think? You know what, I think it's okay. I think we could put something else coming out here, but I don't think it's necessary. I think we did a pretty good job of balancing out our colors and making sure we've got it full all the way around. Okay, let's set aside our stamps. Actually, we've got to stamp our sentiment. And I am going to stamp that. You know what, I'm gonna stamp that after we trim our label. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I find because it cuts off so much that if I stamp it before and then trim the end, sometimes it's not in the middle or where I want it to be. So if you've used our punches before, you know on the back there's a lever here, uh, you have to unlock it, and then your punch is ready for punching. This is meant to close it and hold it tight for storage so that you can store them in a drawer, on a shelf, and it stays flat and it's not so bulky. So make sure you check that lever if it's not working for you. I'm gonna use the one here on this end, this really fancy one, I think it's very pretty. <clears throat> the other thing I find when I cut this, so this is one inch, um, and it fits the largest size here, but I find you need to trim it just like ever so much smaller than one inch. If it's one inch, it's good. It's really hard to kind of get in here. So I always trim it just slightly smaller than one inch. Okay, so we're gonna stick this in here, and push it until it stops, and it feels like you're pushing forever, and then you're gonna just trim it off. So see, you've got this piece here that you're trimming off, which really is a distance from here to here um, which is about a quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm just going to trim the one side because I'm actually going to have it like this where it's sticking off where it kind of ends flat. Am I even in the camera? <laughs> like this. So that the one end is uh, has this nice scallop border here and then this end I'm going to cut flat against the side. So I'm just going to do that one side here. Close up my punch and I'm going to take out a sentiment. And I didn't do this ahead of time. So which sentiment should we use. Um, how about we go ahead and use miles apart but still in my heart. Let's do that one. I think that one is pretty. Uh, <clears throat> okay let's find our block and I'm going to punch stamp this I think in rich razzleberry. It's kind of the darkest of our colors. And we haven't used a ton of it here so this will be nice. Let me eyeball this. If we're gonna put that on like that, we're gonna want our sentiment about there. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna put this on here. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to just take this, kind of eyeball it where I want, flip it over, and I can tell it's not straight. And we're going to just trim this. Now I know normally you would stick this on first, but I want to use dimensionals. So that's why I'm not sticking it on before I cut. I'm going to just hold it down, give it a trim. And now we've got that flat edge that I was talking about. Okay, let's put this piece on with some dimensionals.
I might just put one more here at the end, make sure that it doesn't get beaten up and floppy. Keeps its shape, especially as it goes through the mail. And then we're gonna just take this and we're gonna put this right onto here, just like this. Now is that straight? That is straight. Okay, actually, you know what I forgot? I was gonna put this on with that, but I think we can still tuck it in. We certainly can. We can do that. Okay, let's add some glue to the back of this. Sometimes we forget things, but there's always a way. And the liquid glue is great for this, if you're trying to do things after the fact, because you can move them around. Now that I'm just tucking this in, gives me the chance to tuck and then press it down. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna come behind after I've adhered it and I'm gonna just trim this off. Uh, I think I'm gonna to have to add a little bit more adhesive to this one end. Seems like it does not have any down here. Let's just stick a little bit down there. Okay. Okay, so we've got that on there. Guys, I am all over the place today, am I not? Look how pretty that was, and that was not hard. Now we're gonna put this onto our card base, and I'm gonna use dimensionals again. You wouldn't have to, you could stick it straight on with your um, adhesive, but I'm gonna put some dimensionals on here. Just, I think it's just a really easy way to add some interest, and it makes your card look extra handmade. You know, not flat like the ones you buy at the store. This one was made by you, has a little bit of something extra, and dimensionals are a great way to do that. I go through these things like crazy. I pretty much on any order I make, I put on a pack of dimensionals because I'm gonna need them. Okay, so we're going to stick this on. And look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? That's very, very easy and very pretty. Now, you could stop right there because I think it's gorgeous. You could also add a piece of ribbon under here. You know how I've shown you to put the little loop-de-loops -loops underneath of your sentiments. I am going to pull out the Artistry Bloom, Blooms Artistry Blooms sequins. Um, they come in a lot of the really beautiful pinks and oranges, um, yellows, and there's a blue. So I think the colors are going to look stunning with this. And I just need to decide which colors I want to use. Um, I don't want to take away from the purple that we already have, but I'm wondering about the blue. You know what, I think it's gotta be this purple. And I don't think my take a pick is gonna work very good with this. So we're gonna just stick these on here. And they're kind of just slightly different colors, these sequins, so they're really pretty, because you can, um, if you look at them, some of them have a little bit more blue, some of them have a little bit more yellow in them. So they're perfect for this project, actually. All right, and what do you think, folks? Do you love it? I love it. I'm really happy. I don't know. Some days you just feel like there's a certain stamp set that is just calling your name. And today it was this one. So I hope you enjoyed this today at um, Cards and Coffee where we make quick cards in 15, 20 minutes and under over our lunch hour. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you'll pull out some of your beloved stamp sets that maybe you haven't used in a while and give them a go. And if you have any questions about today's project, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to chat. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for joining me. Bye.